Okay, the project requires you to look at two differential equations. Uh, one is developed from the circuit shown here on the left, and the other one is developed from the circuit shown here on the right. So what I'd like to do is kind of review how to approach any of these differential equation uh, problems. And to be honest, they're really no different than circuits that have resistors. The only problem is in circuits with resistors, we say that V equals I times R. But in the case of, and, and when I say that, I say I have a voltage across and a current through. If I'm talking about now a differential equation, then I have a situation where I have an inductor and there is a voltage across that inductor and a current through it and a capacitor where I have a voltage across and a current through. And I have a relationship between the current and voltage in those devices, VL equals L di L by dt. And I C equals C D V C D T. All right. When I'm talking about um, these new elements, these inductors and capacitors, the other thing I need to remember is that I can write these two things. You know, it's very simple to solve for the current in a resistor. If I know the voltage across it, I can solve for the current with simple algebra. In the case of an inductor, I have to do calculus, right? I, the other relationship would be to say IL equals one over L times the integral of VL dt. And here it would be to say that V sub C equals one over C times the integral of I C dt. All right, so we'll, we need to use those kind of five relationships, if you will, every time we're writing a differential equation. Now, things to, the thing to remember is in these problems, we have two energy storage elements, right? Two energy storage elements in these problems. And so that always means that our differential equation will require a second derivative, all right? So we always wanna look at what it is the problem is asking us for. In, in the case of the circuit shown here on the left, which comes from problem three, They've asked us to solve for VC, all right, the capacitor voltage, which is written here as V in two, okay? And in the case of the, the circuit shown here on the right, they've asked us to solve for the capacitor voltage. So solve for V sub C, which we've been told to call Y of T, okay? So we're solving for a voltage on a capacitor, in both cases. So that means that both of these should have a second derivative on the capacitor voltage, okay? So in this case, we're gonna say d squared y by dt squared. All right, so we know we have to get to second derivatives. So we, we need to start from these sort of primitives, I guess, if you will, these sort of five tools and figure out how to develop the differential equations, okay? So we bear in mind that we're solving for the capacitor voltage in both cases. Now, if I look at both of these, really the problem that I have in both cases is I have to go back to my basic circuit toolkit to look at what are the tools that I know to be able to develop those differential equations. Looking at this, I basically have the tools. This guy here is really, if I look at this, this is one mesh, right? So I have one mesh here. Over here, I have two meshes. But most importantly, if I look at this, I have one independent node, okay? So I can define this bottom node right here as ground. And I can say, I have this node that I don't know and this node that I do, right? I have a voltage source right there. So I know that node. So the one independent node is this guy right here, which I could call Y or V sub C, right? The voltage across that resistor is V sub C or we've written as Y of T. So that means that the voltage here with respect to the ground node is V sub C or Y. So we have one independent node to solve for. So that tells me for the circuit over here, mesh analysis is the approach, okay? And over here, nodal analysis is the approach.
Now, the thing that gets a lot of people confused about these two statements, in mesh analysis, you are solving for currents, right? You solve for currents. When you learned this with resistors, you were solving for currents. And you, when you learn nodal analysis with the resistors, you were solving for voltages, right? You were solving for voltages. That's not really what you're doing though. You're not developing in nodal analysis equations for voltages. In a mesh analysis, you're not developing equations for currents. Where you start with mesh analysis is you write KVL equations, all right? By looking at the voltage across each individual element, which is in terms of the current through that element. In the case of nodal analysis, you're writing KCL equations for the currents at the node, which you place in terms of the voltage, okay? So if we look at that, then what that says is, I look at a circuit like this one and I say, all right, well, I have a voltage across this resistor, a voltage across this inductor. So I'll write this as V sub R, V sub L, and I need to do a KVL. So in, that, in this case, I would say zero equals minus V Thevenin plus V sub R plus V sub L plus V sub C or V in two, right? So because I've called that V in two, I'm gonna write it that way. Now, what I need to do is look at this equation, V Thevenin equals V sub R plus V sub L plus V in. If I go back and I look at my primitives up here, I can make, I can use these, these relationships, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one to all relate back to this KVL equation that I've just written. So the thing that I, I can see here is the current is the same in all of the devices, right? The current's the same in all of the devices. So IR equals IL equals IC, right? And so what I can do is I can go back and I can use that information to help me to, to write what the differential equations are gonna be. So, so what I do is I say, okay, well, if I know that, then I know that VL, so if I look at this equation, right? My, my KVL equation, it has in it VR, and it has in it VL, let me write it down here. It has VR and VL. Because the currents are all the same, what I can do is I can begin to say, all right, VR must be IC times R, and VL must be L times DIC by DT. And then I have, so in other words, I use the relationship that I know, the primitive relationship that I know for the voltage and the resistor, and then I use the same one for the inductor, but I have another one too, V sub or I sub C equals C DVC DT, which in terms of the way I've written this, this is C DV in two DT. With these relationships here, I can substitute into here and get a second order differential equation. You should be able to see how to do that, right? And this was V in two. Right? You should be able to see how to use those relationships to turn that into a differential equation of the form that you need to solve the differential equations numerically. Remember, to get into a form like that, I'm gonna have X of T equals D squared something. So in this case, my something is gonna be V in two. B in two DT squared plus B times DV in two DT plus C V in two. You should get a differential equation once you make the substitutions here into here, you should get something of this form or something that can be algebraically manipulated into that form. All right, that should be a pretty straightforward process with that basic understanding. In this case, for the circuit on the right, which is in problem four, right? In this case, you have one independent node. And so we need to write KCL equations. So when I look at this, 
you start writing your KCL equations immediately in terms of voltages. But the thing to think of is to really do it in terms of the current. So I look at this and I have I sub L going this way. I have I sub C going this way. And I have I sub R going this way. Now, the way that I look at this too, is I also say, well, I need to remember that there is a voltage across that inductor, V sub L. Now, looking at that V sub L right there, I can say that that V sub L is equal to V in, which is in this case, X out. That's the node voltage at this point, right? Minus V sub C, the node voltage here, which we were calling Y. So X out minus Y. All right, that's gonna be important later. So when I look at this, Again, remembering that I need to get to a second order differential equation in terms of the voltage on the capacitor. That means I eventually need to use the substitutions properly to get my nodal, my, to get my KCL equation in terms of a second order derivative on the voltage on the capacitor, okay? So I look at this here and I say, all right, I have a current going into this node I sub L I have I sub C coming out, I sub R coming out. So I can say my nodal equation is I sub L equal to I sub C plus I sub R. Now you can write that any way you want. You could have said I sub L minus I sub C minus I sub R equals zero, right? That's an, e that's an equivalent statement. You could have said I sub C plus I sub R minus I sub L is equal to zero, right? Also fine. I usually write mine in terms of currents going in equal currents going out. So then what do I do? I, at this point, again, bearing in mind that my target is to get to some equation in terms of V sub C, well, I have it already, right? I can make substitutions here because I sub C is in terms of, right? I sub C equals C D V D T. So I can make a good substitution there. I sub R, the voltage across that resistor is V sub C. So I sub R is V sub C over R. So I can easily get the right side of that equation into V sub C terms. Question is, what do I do with I sub L, right? Well, again, I gotta go back to these relationships. When I have an I sub L, I can use this equation. I sub L equals one over L times the integral of V L dt. And we said before, V L is this. Right? It's the voltage at the plus terminal minus the voltage at the, at the negative terminal. Right? And specifically, it's the node voltage at the plus terminal minus the node voltage at the minus terminal. Okay? So what I can say is I sub L equals one over L integral VL dt. And as we set up above, VL is X out minus VC. So I can say this is one over L times integral X out minus V sub C DT like that, right? Now, again, if I look at that, that's not something that is differential, it's integral. So what that means is when I write this in my equation, I'm gonna have I sub L equals one over L integral X out of T DT minus one over L integral V sub C DT equals I sub C equals C DV C DT plus I sub R is V sub C over R. Now you should know that my next step is to take the derivative of both sides, right? If I take the derivative of an integral, the integral sign goes away. If I take the derivative of a derivative, it becomes a second derivative. That's the, that's the straightforwardness of this approach. So what you have to do is you got to figure out how to work from those statements to get the equation again into the form that I specified right there. But all we've done is mesh analysis and nodal analysis and combined those two things with these sort of primitive relationships. The thing to remember and the thing that throws a lot of people off is mesh analysis means that you're, again, when you learned it in, in the context of resistive circuits, you always thought of yourself as solving for currents, which you were. But what you were doing is you were writing KVL equations. So when you're doing mesh analysis here, you write a KVL equation, 
And then you, from that KVL equation, substitute in the stuff the you know, substitute in these relationships with the goal in mind of what you are trying to solve for. If you're solving for the capacitor voltage, then you need a second derivative on the capacitor voltage. If I am looking at this problem over here where I have one independent node, I'm doing nodal analysis, which means I need to write KCL equations. Forget about the fact of what you learned in, in circuits one where you're thinking about solving for a voltage. What you were doing is you were writing KCL equations. So I need to look at what are the currents and then use those currents with these relationships to figure out how I get to a second derivative for the capacitor voltage. This is the approach. 